In the eastern corner, weighing in at 46 tons, we have the Russian T90. And in the western corner, weighing in at 68 tons, we have the United States of America's M1A2 Abrams. How's it going, guys? Today we're going to compare two phenomenal military systems and something that I really enjoy, which is tanks. Please comment throughout this video. Let me know all of the different ways that I'm wrong, you tank nerds. If you haven't already, give me a subscribe, give me a follow, send me a nasty email, whatever you want to do. We are going to be judging these two tanks based off of three things, okay? The first one is specs. What are these tanks made of? The second is the logistical load that the machines place on the element that is using them. Logistics are often overlooked, but they cannot be understated in how important they are. And finally, we're going to judge these tanks based on their capabilities, and we're going to assess a winner. Now, there, there are people out there that would say that tanks are becoming irrelevant. I could not disagree more. Tanks bring ground power quickly, and they do it with their own defense. I also love that the tanks need to rely on infantrymen. Big old tank, little bitty infantrymen. One infantryman with a shoulder-fired weapon can do a lot of damage to a tank, but when they work in concert, when they have a little bit of combined arms, magic happens. Combined arms means we're putting two things together, right? It's like, it's like peanut butter and jelly, but with military forces, warfare, and, and, and death. All right, we're going to keep this authentic to Russia in this video, and so I will be deleting comments that I don't agree with. I'm just kidding. If your comment gets deleted, it wasn't me. Stop crying about it in my email. Dang. All right, starting off with the Russian T-90. It's Russia's third generation main battle tank, superseding the T-72 and the T-80. It's equipped with a 125 millimeter smooth bore cannon, and it can also fire anti-tank guided missiles. It's got composite armor and explosive reactive armor, which just basically means pretty solid armor. The engine makes a thousand horsepower. It has pretty solid mobility for a tank and it can travel up to 60 kilometers per hour. The Russian T-90 weighs 46 tons, which especially in comparison to the US Abrams, but just kind of generally for a tank is pretty light. And so it has a higher level of mobility at the offset of armor, right? It offers slightly less protection than maybe a heavier tank would. It requires three crew members, a commander, a gunner, and a driver. The Russian T-90 is based on old variants. They upgraded a lot of the stuff within the tank. It's got better fire control systems, thermal imaging, and more modern targeting systems. Probably one of the biggest benefits or one of the biggest boons, strengths, whatever, is the fact that the Russian T-90 is significantly cheaper to build and maintain than many modern tanks. You can field roughly twice as many T-90s as you can Abrams, and throughout their life, they're gonna have a lot less maintenance requirements. The Russian T-90 has seen service in the Syrian and Chechen wars, right? The predominant combat that Russian tanks have seen is in other nations' wars. They get outsourced, Russia sells them to people. The American M1 Abrams, or as I said earlier, the M1A2 Abrams, which is the most modern variant, is America's main battle tank. And it is a phenomenal tank. Plans to build it started in the 1970s and it replaced the M60. There are several variants, but the one that you're gonna see most, the one that's the most relevant is the M1A2. It has a 120 millimeter smooth bore cannon. It can also fire anti-tank guided missiles. It has both composite and modular armor, and in addition to that, it's actually got armor that has integrated depleted uranium, so it's got a lot, there's a lot of stopping power, there's a lot of protection in that armor. And it pays for it by being a thick boy. It has advanced fire control systems, thermal imaging, advanced communications equipment, and it's also got laser range finding capabilities. And that's not like the shooting range. That's like the enemy range. We're gonna find the enemy and we're gonna shoot him as if we were on a shooting range, but we're shooting, we're shooting the enemy, okay? It's not confusing, don't be confused. 
It is updatable and upgradable. See that? That's called alliteration. You guys didn't think I knew that word, but I do. Another big word I know is metamorphosis and sedimentary. The Abrams, very expensive to build. Cost roughly twice as much as a Russian T90. And uh, it costs even more than that to maintain those things. Them suckers break and they break hard. All right, so let's compare and contrast these. Let's do that over. All right, voice cracked. I'm not going through puber anymore. I did that. Let's compare and contrast these two great machines. Probably the biggest strength that the T90 has is that it's cheap and it's highly mobile. Funny enough, uh, the U.S. has a expeditionary military. The U.S.'s military force is meant to go other places and do great things around the world. I already know I'm going to get a bunch of flack for that statement in the comments. Let me have it. There's nothing that you can say that is worse than the things that I say to myself. It's highly mobile and it's cheap to build and maintain. You can field roughly twice as many. And Lord, they're needing it in the conflict with Ukraine. The primary weakness of the T-90 is the auto loader. The M1 Abrams has a crew of four. You've got a loader in there, but the Russian T-90 has an auto loader. Due to the positioning of the auto loader and the lack of positioning of armor on the turret of the vehicle, top-down shots are gonna cause that sucker to cook off and the whole thing goes kablooey. Now, in a tank on tank battle, right, you're not hitting the top, right? You're not hitting a top-down shot with a tank. But in modern warfare, we have tanks working in concert with drones. We have everybody working in concert with drones. And so that is a significant weakness that I would be remiss not to acknowledge, okay? That is a huge, that, that weak point is like the, the hole that they shot those plasma balls in on the Death Star in Star Wars. Bingo, bango, bongo, you hit it over the head, over the top like a carnival game, pa! And it's going down or up or to the sides, it's exploding. Let's talk strengths and weaknesses for the Abrams. The Abrams has significantly better armor. Just a couple shots and you can deplete the armor off of a T90. An M1 Abrams is gonna keep on coming. It is not gonna stop. The armor on it is extremely effective. In addition to that, I would assess that we would call the T90 a modern tank where we would call the Abrams an advanced tank. The technology inside of it is gonna make command and control from within the tank extremely easy. For those of you that don't know, command and control is how we direct forces on the battlefield. A commander is going to lead military forces. Command and control is how they direct those forces. It's just a military term. That can be done pretty much from within an M1 Abrams relatively easily. The biggest weakness to the M1 Abrams is the logistical load that is placed on the unit that's using them, okay? It is heavier and it, its engine is 50% more powerful. It's gonna use a lot more fuel and all the other associated lubricants and fluids you, you'd have with running a machine that big. Tanks drink. They like to drink more than they do down at the American Legion or the Veterans of Foreign War. Those like bar things that they have, all right? Those meeting halls are bars. You're not gonna convince me otherwise. We are judging these two tanks. Now we're gonna decide which one's better and we're gonna do it based off of three criteria. All right, we're gonna take a look at the specs, we're gonna take a look at the logistical load, and we're gonna take a look at the capabilities of these tanks. Then we're gonna decide which one is better. I don't know why I just said that like that. That was kinda weird. I'm always trying new things because I haven't done this many of these long form videos. I'm just trying to give you guys what I think that you want. All right, as far as specs go, and not the glasses that they gave you in basic training, the old birth control goggles, okay, BCGs, Specs, as in, what, what are these tanks made of, okay? And it, it almost goes without saying, it's near inarguable that as far as armor, weaponry, technology, the Abrams well outpaces the T-90. The Abrams has more advanced technology, it has better armor, it's more reliable, and it doesn't have a glaring weak point. Next up is the logistical load, and this is an extremely important aspect to warfare. It cannot be understated, despite the fact that it often gets overlooked. For the first 150 years or so of the history of the United States of America, we lost many battles 
not because our tactics were bad, not because we had bad weaponry, not because our troops weren't doing the most. We lost it because we didn't have enough beans and bullets. The logistical load that these kind of vehicles place on an element cannot be understated. And if you don't have fuel, the tank's not gonna run. The advantage goes to the T90 by far for logistical load. Their maintenance is cheaper. They're cheaper to build in the first place. They consume a significantly less fuel. I'm gonna put a point in the corner of the T90. Now it comes down to capabilities. Drum roll, please. On capabilities between these two tanks, we have got to give it to the M1A2 Abrams. The M1A2 Abrams is significantly more advanced. It has more advanced technology. As I said earlier, you can conduct command and control effectively from inside the tank, all buttoned up. It's got better target acquisition capabilities. Just in general, it's a more lethal tank. It can do more.